where you live. All right, welcome to week two of the Friday Night Frenzy. I'm Andrew Pogar, riding solo tonight once again. Rob Hughes enjoying his honeymoon on a beach right now somewhere in Aruba. We begin tonight's show with a rivalry game that resumed just two years ago. It's no secret when West Lafayette and McCutcheon clash, the game comes down to the wire. In 2014, the Mavs topped the Red Devils 45-37 last season at Gordon Straley Field. RDP outlasted McCutcheon by just a point, 34-33. Some things never change. Another one possession ball game, an instant classic this evening at Ellison Stadium. Let's show you some pictures. I honestly, I don't even know where to begin with this one. I guess, how about at the end? McCutcheon leading 14-13 late in the fourth. Darren Lathrop punching it in from nine yards out. 21-13 maps. But you can never count out RDP. With 35 seconds left, Mikey Kidwell under duress. Off one leg, he launches one to Matt Marley, and we're jamming. Marley gets the feet in bounds. 21-20 the score. Westside has to go for two. Kidwell on the play fake. And the senior finding a wide open Jonah Williams for the conversion. And we're tied at 21. Mavs coach Ken Frauheiger in complete disbelief. We head to overtime. First Red Devils possession. Kidwell to Marley again. Yes, sir. 28-21 West Lafayette. McCutcheon now with the rebuttal. Peyton Williams hooking up with Gavin Dunbar and Dunbar hauling it in. We head to a second overtime. McCutcheon starts with it and Williams ends it. Book him for six points. 35-28 McCutcheon. This looks way too familiar. Final chance for RDP. Fourth down. Kidwell throwing one up for grabs, but Marquan Hardy comes down with it for McCutcheon. The Mavericks win in triumphant fashion. 35-28, the final score. We stay in Lafayette. Central Catholic hosting Darren Catholic in the Bishop's Cannon Trophy game. The Eagles coming out of the gate very strong. Grant Freemion on the reception. Freemion taking it to the 10-yard line before being brought down by Scott Lovell. The very next play, Darren punching it in from the 10. Carter McGinnis with the carry. The PAT no good, 6-0 the score. The Eagles not done. McGinnis again running in another TD. This time, Garen makes the PAT. It's 13-0 Eagles, but the Knights closing the gap. Ben Metzinger on the carry, and Benny Ballgame doing work. Looking for six. Garen and CC would go into the break tied at 13. All CC in the second half. The Knights score 34 and answered points. Keep the cannon, 34-13, the final. Lafayette Jeff hosting East Chicago Central, trying to go 2-0 to start the season. Broncos down 12-0 in the second quarter. Josiah Lee gets the handoff and powers for a first down. Broncos keeping it in the ground or on the ground. Britton Chandler up the middle. Jeff moving the chains. Later, it's Chandler up the middle again for the touchdown. Jeff down 12-6. Broncos turn up their defense. Lee drops Gary Sidrak with Sinclair for the loss. Jeff gets the ball back. The toss goes to Latrell Brown, and Brown finding holes in the Cardinal defense. Chandler again up the middle for a solid gang. Later, fourth and goal, and Jeff's QB, Matt Wilkerson, threads the needle to JT Williams for the touchdown. The Broncos take the lead going into halftime. Jeff pulls this one out, 20 to 18, the final there. Elsewhere, Western Boone hosting Harrison. Picking it up in the first quarter, Weibo quarterback Jack Gilliam keeps it. Find space on the outside to pick up a first down. But Harrison knows better for next time. Same drive, same play call, but Cade Bishop gets the sack. Harrison starting to gain some momentum, and they would keep it. The Raiders put together a drive that ends in a Dawson Danke touchdown. Raiders up 7-0, and they would actually go on to lose 26-25, the final score. That does it for the first half of the frenzy. Four games down, still five more to go. Coming up, we'll make stops at Benton Central, North White, Pioneer, and Delphi. The Oracles haven't started the season 2-0 since 2002. We'll tell you how Josh Strasser's squad did against rival Carroll in the Bacon Bowl when we return. All right, welcome back to the Frenzy. We called an audible. We're going to switch up the cameras here. They say bacon makes everything better. The Delphi Oracles were much better on opening day than years past. The Oracles winning their first game of the season for the first time since 2002. Josh Strasser and company aiming for a 2-0 start, but they would have to go through rival Carroll in this year's Bacon Bowl. Quarterback Weston Wendell on fourth and long, rolling out, looking downfield. He lobs it downfield to Adam Ryder, who catches it for what could be a touchdown, but no, sir. The side judge says he did not have control of the ball. Incomplete pass. 
Cougars quarterback Trey Philbrun out of the pocket looking to pass. Pressure is on and he's hit as he unloads, throwing an incomplete pass. So Oracle's ball on the turnover. Wendell with the fake on the handoff, now looking downfield, looking and throwing almost right into the hands of the Cougars defender, Quinton Veach. And now it's the Cougars' turn. They drop back to pass, rolling out and connects with Devin Anderson, who gets them 10 plus yards. So the Cougars facing third and 28. Philbrun with the handoff to Trenton Brummett. He cuts up the side and then back town, or back down the opposite sideline. Missing one defender, a little shake and bake on another, and he's brought down for a 26 yard run. No touchdowns in this highlight, I guess. Carroll will go on to defeat Delphi 33 to seven. Coach Brown will join us in the coach's corner. Out to Benton Central we go. The Bison squaring off with Seeger. I think this one up in the second quarter. Seeger trying to march down the field. Grayson Green dropping back, looking for Landon Stetler, but Colton Tucker has other plans. Huge hit there for BC. Tucker now in at quarterback, and he airs one out to junior Blake Morin for a solid 25-yard reception. So this time Green comes up with the big hit for Seeger, though. Ben Central not putting on the brakes. The direct snap goes to Morin, who charges his way for the nice gain and the first down. Once again, the snap goes to who else? Morin. And this time, Jason Foster smashes his way through for six points, extending the Bison's lead to 27-7. BC would go on to win this game. Welcome to North White, where the Vikings honored head coach Jim Davis for making the Indiana Football Hall of Fame by naming the field after him. Frontier ball first as Colton McCracken gets things McCracking with a quick pass to Tyler Roberts, who picks up a first down for the Falcons. Later on that possession, McCracken hits Jack Mickelsell in stride, and Mickelsell breaks tackles until he's brought down by a face mask. No call on the play. North white ball as Jake Quaber lofts it out to Tyler Hook, and he hooks his way into the red zone before the end of the first quarter. After no score in the first quarter, Nick Pinn punching it in for North White. This is early in the second quarter. Floodgates, though, they've opened wide up. The Vikings show no mercy, beating Frontier 73 to nothing. I repeat, 73 to nothing. We now head to East to Royal Center, where the Pioneer Panthers host the Winnemac Warriors after a 34 to nothing lead at the half. Pioneer handing it off to Keith Nyes, who knifes his way for a nice looking touchdown to make it 41 to 0. Winnemac would answer, though, in the form of a Jack DeGroote bomb to Brady Brum, who tips it to himself and runs it in for another score. Brum gets the assist on that one. Later, Panthers still running well as Danny Grogerich plows his way into the red zone once again. I'm sorry if I misspelled your last name. I mispronounced it. Pioneer no issue running the ball tonight, however. The Warriors would stop the drive and take it the other way as DeGroote hits Harley Pugh. And like a bullet, Pugh fires down the sideline. Pugh Pugh. Panthers cruise to a 41-12 victory at home. I did not write that. In Cass County, the Logan Sport Bear is hosting the Frankfurt Hot Dogs. Barry's quarterback, Ryan Bullard, with the handoff to Tate Gabby. He finds a hole and keeps chugging with his feet. He gets the first down. Bullard then with the toss to Dustin Wilson, who takes it up the sideline, dodges one defender, runs through another, and is tackled after picking up 10-plus yards. So Bullard dropping back, rolling out, Passes to a wide open Oscar Rimaldo, who puts them in the red zone. The Berries will kick the field goal to extend the lead. Hot Dogs Noah Debris rolling out of the pocket, but he swallowed up for a sack and a loss. Debris again under pressure, and he's forced to throw an illegal player. I don't know if that makes any sense whatsoever, but he's flagged. Logan Sport defeats Frankfurt 29 to 14, the final. There. That does it for the opening week or the second week of the Friday Night Frenzy. Coming up, Carroll head coach Mark Brown will join us in the coach's corner. The Cougars claim the Bacon Bowl. We'll break down their win over Delphi next in the coach's corner. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Frenzy. Joining us tonight, 
Carroll head coach, Mark Brown. Coach, thanks so much for coming in. No problem. Happy Congratulations on the win. What impressed you most about tonight's game? Well, I thought we did a very nice job on offense of being able to control the game. We were able to, um, in the first half, move the ball consistently, which we struggled with a little bit last week, and really came out and took control of the game from the get-go. And it just helped, helped us keep going and keep momentum going for the entire game. I know the Bacon Bowl is not a sectional championship or a state championship for that matter, but what does it mean to you to take home that prize? It, it, it is a big, it's a big deal to our community for, for both Carroll and Delphi because we, I mean, we're the only two te teams and only two schools in the conference or in the county, I should say. And uh, it's just, it's just, it's nice when you're the, you're the show. You're the show on the road and everybody's out to support you and support their communities and it's, it's fantastic. Looking ahead to next week, what do you have to do to beat Tri-Central real quick? Well, with Tri-Central, we know we've, we've, had, we've struggled, had our struggles with them in the last two years. We've lost him by combined three points in the last two years. And we, we need to come out and be physical. Coach Gilbert does a great job with their team. They're a uh, split back veer type team, want to run the ball and control the clock. We've got to come out and be able to key and read, do our job, and take care of business. Well, we wish you the best of luck next week. Thanks so much for making the drive from Flora for this brief amount of time to spend with us. No, we really I, appreciate it. I appreciate it. you guys. Thank Again, you. Good luck next week. Make sure to check out our website, WLFI.com, and click on the sports tab for all highlights from tonight's games. That'll do it. We'll see you next week.